Last week, we showed you some simple car maintenance tips by changing spark plugs. Today, we'll get our hands dirty and change some engine oil. Engine oil is a lubricant for the car's moving parts. Over time, the oil breaks down and clogs up with contaminants. This can happen anywhere between three months or two years. So how do you find out when to change your engine oil? Well, one method is to open up your service manual and look at your service schedule. The other way is to lift up the dipstick and to check at the colour of the substance. If it's golden brown, it's okay. If it's black, you've got to change it. Before you start, you have to make sure you get the right equipment and parts. And in terms of parts, you'll need a bottle of engine oil and an oil filter. Now, before you purchase these parts, you have to refer to the owner's manual to find out the correct specification. Now, equipment-wise, you'll need a wrench as well as one that can open an oil filter, a container, a funnel, a hydraulic jack, an old rag, axle stands, as well as some newspapers. Now, allow me to break this into three simple steps. Firstly, is for you to drain out the engine oil and then replace the oil filter and lastly, pour in the new engine oil. Now, it's always good to allow the engine to cool down before you start because a hot engine is, well, hot. Before you drain the oil from the bottom, it helps if you open the oil filler cap on top. This will even out the air pressure and help the oil drain easier. Jack up the car at the cross member. And once it's at its right height, put at least two stands for safety. Next, we want to unscrew the drain plug. Don't forget to put lots of old newspaper in a container to catch the oil underneath, unless you want to start swimming in a pool of black goo. Be very careful when unscrewing because you don't want the plug to drop in the container and get lost in the old oil. All this old oil is still worth something. Don't burn it or throw it down a drain. That's a good way to make Mother Nature very angry at you. Instead, collect it and you can send it to a recycling center where they may even pay you for it. After that, don't forget to screw the bolt back so that the new oil doesn't drain out. Now we're going to change the oil filter. For our viewers, do bear in mind that oil filters are not in a standard position in all cars. But because you have bought a new filter, you know what you're looking for. Remember, before you unscrew it, put a container underneath to catch any of the old oil left in. Before screwing in the new filter, just wet the gasket ring of the new filter with some new oil. It helps make a tighter seal. It can also fill the filter with new oils that it's faster for the car to regain its oil pressure. Just be careful not to spill it as you tighten the filter. Finally, let the car down. Pour in the new oil using a funnel to help. It's better to underfill slightly in case there is extra oil left that didn't drain out. Anyway, it's easier to add some more later. Okay, now that we are all done, start the engine and let it run for a while. And just to be safe, go underneath and check for oil leaks. Well, there's none, so we're good to go. The dipstick should also show there is enough clean new oil. The reading may be slightly lower than it really is, so it's better to wait until the oil settles. About a day should be enough. Well, there you go. I hope you're not put off by the complexity of it. It gets easier as you do it more often. And at the end of the day, by just spending a little bit of time, you get to save some money. You know the funny thing, you guys act like I don't exist. Well, I suppose you guys... You want to test the car on full load, right? Yeah. So, I call for backup. Okay. Mm -hmm. on our left, we have the Kuwiki team. And on our right, we have Cartel Records. Cartello! Hello! Hello! Oh, this is Becca. Yes, and let's weigh the guys in. Okay, you go. Let's see. What's the way? How does
does one push an MPV to its limits? Well, we've decided to pack both cars with as much weight as possible to simulate real driving conditions. Oh my goodness! You're severely underweight! Well, the quickie team looks a bit... um... lightweight. While the cartel boys don't seem to have that problem. It's going to be roughly about 100 kilos. This is just nice. <laughs> Even with Alice being underweight, the Alza is more than loaded. Now it looks like it's my turn to weigh in. This is one of you are severely underweight. Whoa. Wait, that doesn't make up 347 kilograms. Hey, what happened to that big, not so fat anymore Indian guy? Where is he? Um. Prem couldn't make it. Sorry. Oh, so how are we going to fill 347 kilograms? Uh, what about the quickie cameraman? Me? Ah, problemo solved. So we decided the best way to try these cars out is under a full load. So what we're going to do, the Exora will be filled up with 310 kilograms of ATV squeaky treats. And we fill up the Alza with 347 kilos worth of the Malaysian hip hop. You know what I'm saying? On est levé au monde! Yep, rather spastic right now, but nevertheless, we are going to take these cars through a slalom course and see how well they perform under a full load. Teams, to your cars! Coming up, the Alza and the Exora go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Find out who comes out on top. <laughs>